Alongside two national champs in one night from no national champs taking ninth, ninth in the NCAA tournament. It was just amazing. And the Scarlet Knights did not have a national champion before tonight, and it's RU times two. It is just being with my family all there and being with all, like the extended family of the Rutgers fan base and celebrating after and just showing how far we've come and kind of like everything worked out. Just amazing because it showed me like looking back at it, I didn't really think about it at the time. It shows me like they, they either were just supporting me or they really believed in me. You know, they wanted to be there to be with me for it. What's up guys, John Forster here, Breakdown from the Barn, episode 51. This is part two of a two-part series with the man, national champion, Anthony Ashnall. With me as always, the greatest mind in wrestling, Eric Winock. How you making out, Anthony? Everything's great, man. Everything's great. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, Anthony, in the last podcast, we were talking about we went way back to your youth wrestling South Plainfield, and we jumped ahead to about what you're doing on the senior circuit. We touched a little bit about memories about, you know, national championship. But I want to go back to that redshirt freshman year because you've obviously had a lot of big match matches at Jersey Mike's um, at that time, which was still known as the rack. I still call it the rack, but that's beside the point. And I think one match that has gotten lost because you've done so much, which is probably a good thing and testament to your career, but I'm going to take it back to that first Big Ten match against Iowa, um, kind of jog your memory a little bit. For me, there's a lot of big recruits have come through, but they never quite had that big win against a top five guy, a top 10 guy. And here you are as a redshirt freshman, and you draw in um, you know, Josh Jebba from, from Iowa. You're down one point. And with about three or four seconds left, you hit this sweet single, you fight through, you come through, and then with one second left, you knock off the number six kid in the country, an Iowa wrestler coming to Jersey Mike's, or at that time, the rack. Can you talk about how big of a match that was and really how it set the tone for what, what my opinion was the rest of your career? Yeah, that was amazing. Uh, I definitely remember that match. And uh, me and Andrew Campotano, two four-time New Jersey state champs, were the only two to win that. Matt, or maybe Scott Lavecchio might have no, won No, Lavecchio set it up for you, yep. Yeah, Lavecchio wrestled uh, wrestled the kid I trained a lot with growing up, actually. Blonde, I can't remember his name. Blonde hair kid, he was backup. But yeah, yeah. Um, I remember that match very vividly. Josh Jeva was a stud, uh, heavy, heavy, funky hips. And I just remember the being on that single leg. And I remember feeling everything from what a f freshman should feel versus senior. I just remember being on the leg and I know I finished it, but I remember the thought be being like, I feel like a rag doll. Like I just got to find a way to get <laughs> two legs right now. And it was, I remember it was a quick two call, but uh, you know, it was two and I got the takedown, but uh, yeah, it was awesome. It, it definitely, it definitely springboarded uh, my mental, my like mental thought of what it could be like winning at Rutgers. You know, we lost, 27 or something to nine and and people were pumped <laughs> and yeah. and i remember being at the post conference interview and there wasn't that much negative talk about how the match went and we kind of got crushed so uh that was an exciting year our first year in the big 10 we had tons of great teams coming in we wrestled penn state at home i think we wrestled minnesota at home that year we yep. wrestled uh that that squad iowa at home so it was like an introduction to the next generation of Rutgers wrestling. And I didn't notice that at the time, but uh, it definitely put me in the mindset. Like ah, I want to win every match yeah. at the rack. And I was able to do that. I lost one match at home, but it was on the football field. So I was able to go undefeated in that arena. And uh, I'm very proud of that because, you know, I went to Rutgers to make a difference and that's a big deal to win at home and, you know, yeah. to have that energy and put the energy into the fans and let the fans put the energy back into us. Uh, and now you see what, what the product is, and it's amazing. Well, Jersey yeah, fans, they, they're thing, knowledgeable. I'll chime in real quick about that match. You talk about elevating Rutgers wrestling. I was driving up to the rack, and NJ 101.5, they were talking about the wrestling match on there, which yep. you don't hear too much about. They said I was coming into town. I grabbed my phone. I definitely called in and got on the radio a little bit. But pretty cool, you know, that that match. You know, Iowa's coming in, and it was a – 
pretty uh it was a sold out crowd and you got that big win and i know the place went nuts even though it, the score was 20 something to nine but i think and josh Jebba, a good guy i know he does a lot now for philly wrestling uh you know helps out beat the streets and stuff but it was good to see him you know they talk about getting carver and he got racked by uh true freshman anthony axnall that was a good good match yeah and it's cool because we uh ruckers blew up and we i i had my whole career practicing in the college at barn basement so uh after that year you guys are probably used to that equipment room we blew out the wall of the equipment room so we had like a whole extra little room in the wrestling room and they added a bunch of these inspirational quotes and they put the picture of me on this on this on that single with jeva and it was a huge uh poster that said we want national champions and i looked at that thing every single day till i won ncas and you know that was a huge moment because they blew that picture up like i got to visualize the winning moment and every time i was training extra hours by myself or even in practice and i had a moment a water break or a moment to look at it it was like i I do want to win that i need to win this ncaa tournament i got to find a way and it took me a couple years but i'm very grateful that i was able to get it no, but that's when Rutgers grew up, man. I mean, Rutgers wrestling grew up. I mean, like I was saying earlier, <clears throat> we're Jersey wrestling fans are very knowledgeable. <clears throat> and John and I came up through the EIWA, EIWA era, which was a strong area. It's, it was a, I think people sleep on how good that conference was. But having the Big Ten come to town, and you could say we got crushed, but to have Del Vecchio and then you come up, knock off the six ranked wrestler against Iowa. I grew up with Dan Gable, okay? That meant so much, I think, to Jersey. So I think people forget about the final score. They remember that particular moment. And that's what wrestling brings, those individual matchups that sometimes supersede what you did in the overall duel. So good stuff. Got it. Any yeah, other see... moments at the rack that, that stood out to you, you know, over your years at Rutgers? A bunch, a bunch. But just, uh, you know, we seeing, we're we seeing big matches be a big deal in, in marketing now. And a lot of people on Twitter pushing to market wrestling more. You see that poster car versus uh o'toole and i think it's great we got we have to advertise these big matchups try to grow the sport bigger and bigger get on bigger platforms like espn or whatever we could get on that is going to grow the sport bigger and bigger but i remember a lot pretty much all of them honestly um recently nick ravina posted something on instagram when we beat nebraska who was the second ranked team at the time and that was just total team effort and that's a cute for me I don't. I think no. No one really looks at that as a big match for me. But my freshman year, I lost to Anthony Abedin from Nebraska twice. Oh yeah. And and he kind of like it was close matches, but he had he had my number, and I was able to be an All American. He wasn't, but he had my number that year. And then sophomore year, we wrestled him at the rack. We beat him by a point. I I got the major decision versus him a year later after losing to him twice. Yeah. So it's like a bunch. Everyone did their job. I'm not taking credit but for me that was a huge match for me because it was like okay like i i did jump levels now i'm ready to win an ncaa title i took eight but i definitely jumped a lot of levels let's go and then everyone started doing their job and nick Urbina knocks off dudley i yeah. think billy smith won it in the end for us that match and yeah that was billy just sweet for me. that was for sure a sweet duel me definitely my senior year was amazing uh you know all the matches my senior year, g feller from okie state shooting john smith down on, i love that yeah, it was classic man we need, i'll tell you anthony classic, we need more classic. personality like that i think and there's a fine line between being a clown and unfortunately john i've talked about this. there's some wrestlers i think are just clowns and there's other wrestlers and like guys like yourself del vecchio you had a very unique personality okay i think that was awesome i think that stuff is really it gets people geared up it makes it brings excitement um so i i love those moments man we, we need more of that in the rack i think yeah, I yeah, hear the gun stowing up the 10. I I mean that's that's the stuff that get just gets the fans going crazy, you know. I, I yeah, I love it. We had your boy DeLuca on talking about when he threw Levi Hayes. I mean, that was a big oh yeah, that, was, that place erupted, you know. Um, that was so good one. that's another example of that DeLuca Hayes, match. No. Other where hand, maybe we don't beat Ohio State. But yes. nobody remembers the the score of that duel. What they remember is getting is Deluca laterally dropping some guy back to back. Who's number? That's what everybody remembers. That's what you see. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why I love Russ. That's why I love what Rutgers can do. With those big matches, man. And speaking about the crowd and, and Jersey Mike's, um, this question comes from I'm sure you know Luke Cook. He's been sitting center mat side since I've been going to the rack. Um, who do you remember that there was? Is there an individual person or group that was the loudest for you? Uh, yeah, one match, I mean, 
Lou Cook was loud. And I, I wrestled his son in high school even. And I remember wrestling his son at counties and he, he, he called his son cookie. And I just remember hearing him yell cookie, cookie. <laughs> oh no, cookie. But, uh, definitely him, Tim Berkelow. But my freshman year, we were wrestling Hofstra at the, at the barn at college Ave. And, uh, I was wrestling, uh, a pretty good guy. I, I think his name is Hudson. Um, he was one of their better wrestlers though. And I was losing maybe by like three, take like three, four points. Uh, and I had to kind of rally in the second, third period to come back into the match. And then I ended up winning the match, locking up a cradle at the end. But, uh, I remember my grandma is not with us anymore, but I remember my grandma yelling that match, uh, pretty loudly, which is a cool memory. Um, yeah, I, I definitely, Tim Berkelow, Luke Cook stand out. For the most part, though, when I'm competing my best, it's kind of just yep. in the zone. And I, even when those guys are going nuts, it's nothing until the match is over. I occasionally would hear Goodell saying something crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know, he, he's very animated in the corner. Yep. Uh, you know, sometimes I would go out of bounds and I definitely would hear Goodell, hey, hey, focus or something that was just <laughs> not really important to be saying. But uh, <laughs> he definitely ha is very animated in the corner. Nice, nice. And now let's let's talk about that national championship run. I mean, I'll I'll tell you, I had a I had a one year old, so I couldn't be out there for the full tournament. But I I told my wife, I said, if we get a finalist, I'm driving to Pittsburgh. So I, I left after the semifinal round. I this know when Nuff was out there. I drove through the night. I'm out there. Wait, I got to pause because I'm out there. I I we got our group together. You talk about Tim Burklow, all those guys who I knew. We got all those. This guy comes in the night before, and he's front row he's like yeah i got this ticket on ebay oh, i got tour. front row i got i was fifth row, I was fifth row. I like so this clown. Great. they still like show me plan. when mckay lewis when they show mckay lewis on the picture. espn at nationals last year i'm up there going nuts behind mckay winning it um, so That's it's kind of cool i got fifth row tickets i found a hotel and that was an awesome time so why don't you tell us you know from your perspective you know what it meant winning the national title i mean i came to the the, the Rutgers pre-rally, and then we were out. There was some bar afterwards. We saw you having a good time out there. So why don't you give us your perspective of that, uh, you know, week uh, weekend and that moment for you? Yeah, it was just amazing. It was everything I trained for really after that freshman year in high school all the way up to my sixth year in college. And it was a, a moment that it's like, wow, hard, hard work pays off and discipline pays off and – you could really achieve what you want to achieve if, if you go to work and, uh, and believe in it. So it was just a moment of gratitude with all the, all my family there. I had so much family there, pretty much my whole family and then like extended uncles, cousins and everything. So just amazing. Cause it showed me like looking back at it, I didn't really think about it at the time, but it shows me like they, they either were just supporting me or they really believed in me. You know, they wanted to be there to be with me for it. And, um, I have an amazing family. So just looking back at that weekend, it was just one, I'm grateful that it was with Rutgers and I had Nick Soriano with me and he won the nationals first, but that was a big deal for me. Uh, looking at the whole weekend, like I need, I needed Nick to do what I needed to do, to do that, to be a national champ. I needed Soriano training with me for those two, three years. And I kind of needed him to go win because I felt a lot of pressure. And the moment he started winning and he got to the finals, then he won the finals. I was like, oh, I could just go do my thing. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for him in general, not just for that, but he was good to me. And he uh, he was a great training partner. I'd, st I'd still say we're friends. We don't talk all the time, but when we see each other, we're very friendly to each other. And um, I'm grateful for that experience with him alongside two national champs in one night from no national champs, taking ninth, yeah. ninth in the NCAA tournament. It was just amazing. Well, that and was such the a, other part. Yeah, the other part's like a story, a storybook ending. Yeah, and you all remember little things. What, what I thought was so cool, you talk about the Rutgers fan base. I know I brought my son out to Pittsburgh, and I'd been, I was at Madison Square Garden. Um, you know, one of the first big moments. I was at Penn State years before that. So, but for him to be there in a the third grader, and, and you all remember this, but him and a bunch of his boys ran into you. You signed his sweatshirt out in the hallway, and those are things kids just never forget. So, I mean, that whole that whole weekend was just phenomenal in so many ways for new jersey wrestling um 
let's keep it on. Let's go back a little bit to the South Plainfield thing for me, okay? And there's another big-time South Plainfield wrestler that's come to, to Rutgers, and that's Anthony White. And Anthony White had some really good early success his, his redshirt year. I know John and I were talking about it. He's bumped up a couple of weight classes, had a really good win. But why don't you give us your perspective and thoughts on Anthony White? He's a great – Anthony White's a great individual, man, a great person. You know, wrestling – his wrestling is – is what it is right now, but I, I think his potential in wrestling and his ability even right now is is more is more way more than what he's doing on the mat. So every time I turn tune into Rutgers, I'm just, you know, I'm I'm looking and I'm like, Ant's gonna break through this match. Ant's gonna score a bunch of takedowns and break through, break break this dude he's wrestling because the one thing about Ant is he's probably the most disciplined kid on that team, trains his harder than I I'm I don't want to say everyone because I'm not in there anymore, but I'm guessing he right. trains harder than most of the guys. Uh, he's definitely in amazing shape and he's probably doing all the things outside of the sport. Right. So it's, 100%. it's just a matter of, time. I think it's just a matter of time, you know, Rutgers wrestling put out a little mini little series about, about their athletes. And they had one about him recently. And, you know, you want to know how good of a dude that is. Just watch that video. He's a great person. He uh, he's a great student in the classroom. I think it's just a matter of time. That's my perspective on his wrestling. I I really think he is going to break through. I don't know when it's going to be. Um, you know, that that's kind of on him a little bit, just like just like myself, man. We all go through it, you know. Uh we all go through times of trouble in the sport where uh it takes a little bit to find our mojo and uh I have no doubt he's going to find it. I'm really hoping he finds it this season, you know. Gets himself back to the NCAA tournament and makes some noise. Uh, yeah. But in terms of his future, it's going to happen. He's going to break through. And, you know, I see him as a guy senior year just having a dominant year and putting it all together. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe it's at 174, 184, 197. Yeah. And uh, his kind of style, you know, I'm not saying like I hope he moves up in weight because the 149, 165 jump kind of scared me when I heard about that because I was training a lot with him in the room when I was there. And I, uh, I just thought, it was an advantage to be at 149 for his size. And uh, sometimes you see that at 165, the strength looks like maybe it's a, it matches him, but, but he's a big kid. He's really tall. So it is what it is. And I think maybe he keeps going up, not that you force it, but that style of in your face, hand fighting mm -hmm. and consistency that wins at 184, 197, a little bit more. Um, but I think no matter what weight class he is, he's just, He's just too solid to not figure it out. And, you know, winning and losing isn't everything in wrestling. So he's going to be fine. He's going to be a successful human being no matter what happens in this sport. He He's not going to be someone that we got to worry about as a person. He's going to he's gonna be successful. Rutgers is going to be hitting him up in the future to donate money to the program. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I, I agree with you. I think he's, uh, like you're saying, I feel like every match it's like, is this going to be the one? And I, I think he is a little – undersized right now for 65 got to figure that out maybe wrestle a little differently but you know i'd put money in like you said his senior year i think he's gonna be top 10 guy for sure and and have some really really good wins um let's go back to you know uh, other things you're doing now you're you know i see you uh doing some stuff with columbia and that the new york regional training center why don't you talk a little bit about that not just your training other things that you're doing up there in new york yeah, I'm not just doing stuff with them. You know, I'm part of their program, uh, NYCRTC. I'm a I'm a re uh, resident athlete, and with that, I'm also in the Columbia room training with them because our program's tied in with them. Uh, so, uh, not that I'm a coach in that room, but you know, one, two, three times a week, depending on the week, I'm in there, and I'm wrestling with their 141 and 157 pound guys, and. Um, doing what I can to get better in there as well as helping the guys. If I have moments where I could help them in, in areas, they also have great things for me to help me. Zach, Zach Tonelli, their head coach. He's a great, te great technician and great guy. And he's a great coach as well. So when I'm in there, I'm always trying to get around him. He, he'll train with me quite a bit, which is amazing. And uh, he scraps really hard. So uh, it's good. I love getting in there. You know, it's, it's awesome for me. I live in Hoboken. Um, Six and it's years awesome. I, there. I, I, I love, I love the, uh, it sounds weird, but I love the trans. I love the ride into Columbia in the morning to go to practice. It's, it's exciting. Uh, I just, 
you know, I, I like the routine of it. I'm sitting on the bus or the, or the subway or wherever, however I'm getting in. And, you yeah. know, I'm not driving my car and I'm just relaxed and I'm focused on what I want to be focused on. I'm maybe reading or I'm listening to a podcast and what I want to be listening to. I'm thinking about what I want to work on in that practice. Um, and I, I love doing that all in the chaos of New York city. And it sounds funny, but I just like kind of disappearing and, you know, just being in, in the chaos. And then all of a sudden I'm at Columbia and I'm, I'm focused I'm uh, the whole time. It's just gearing up the 45 minute commute. I'm just gearing up for what I want to be doing at, at that practice. And I really le- enjoy that. Um, and with, with what I'm doing at the NYC RTC as a resident athlete in Columbia, it's like, that's, that's my only job. So, uh, it's all, all in on focus on, you know, this Olympic run. And, uh, to me, that's special. It's, it's something that I really felt like I needed to do if I wanted to be successful on the senior level in wrestling. So, uh, it's everything I wanted with, with the move up there. And, you know, I love the guys uh on the team they're really good they're really good guys it's it's a lot different than being uh around the Rutgers guys you know they're an Ivy League program and there's not really any faking getting into Columbia as a student so it's it's a different expectation as a student you know a lot of them want to put athletics first as like talking about the athletes but school is really important there and not there's not many professor professors willing to let the kids slide not that they would let us slide at Rutgers but You know, Rutgers is more of of an athletic institution where, you know, you could work with your school to maybe extend a extend an exam a little later because you have a wrestling trip or things like that. Where, you know, at Columbia, it's like schools first. No, I hear you. And and you're bringing your jog in my memory because I I love being a dad, love being back in the suburbs. But I remember my days living in Hoboken for six years, going to the city you know, not needing your car, you know, it's for those who haven't experienced, it's a different way of life. And I definitely, I'm happy where I'm at now, but live that life, man, because you never have that again. It's definitely a different experience. Um, But now we're kind of looking into, we've done a lot of looking at the past and the present. I think about the future of Anthony National. Where's Anthony National 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line? I know you've done a lot with mob and media and you've got some other interests. We didn't talk today. We just, we have so much time. You've got so much going on in your life. But why don't we talk about to close things out? Where does Anthony Ashnault see himself 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the line? Um, right now, it's it's really 100% focus on this Olympic run. Uh, and it, Still in the uh, present. Cool. It just sound, I know it's not answering your question, but uh, it's the right answer. I made a lot of changes. I made a lot of changes in the last two years of my life because I felt like I was looking too far in, ahead in my life. I was trying to build mob media. I was doing a lot of clinics. I was trying to coach tons of kids and I loved doing it all, but it just got to, it just started taking too much away from my athletic career. And I didn't realize how fast time was moving. And now once I made the move to train full time again, I just kind of eliminated everything I possibly could that, you know, it wasn't, it was a distraction, but it wasn't because I loved doing it. But like, I just, As much as I wanted to do those things, I just took them out of my life because I want to be doing what I'm doing now more to be the best in the world at wrestling and Olympic champ, world champ. Like you can't have all those side distractions. Yeah. Maybe you could have one or two and maybe you could have others once you figure it out. Like David Taylor, you know, he figured it out and he has a wrestling club, but he kind of figured it out first and started winning them. Um, You know, Chance Marsteller has a great club. Um, It's hard to think though, that it doesn't take away from those guys sometimes another topic but um you know i uh i just felt like i need to focus on this and uh i have a strong belief that my life will take care of it take care of itself once i'm ready to move on and um i i feel like i'll be able to figure out that next step you know i don't really know if it's going to be college coaching or not you know i i coached one year at Rutgers, and uh, i really enjoyed working with all the kids and the guys it was it was learning curves outside of the wrestling room for sure. Um, yeah, I, I just don't really know what that's going to look like. Uh, yeah, you know, sorry, you know, Anthony. No, it's a great it's a great answer. And I think of you know before we close out, I think of you know th- that classic album "Dark Side of the Moon" and Roger Waters was talking about that. Not to get into music, but 
something he said that always stuck with me. I just thought of when you said that was like my whole life we were trained through young school and all is always think about the future, think about the future. And we woke up one day, we realized, my God, the future's here. We're here now. Okay. <laughs> this is what it's about. Um, and what you're saying is spot on. At some point you got to like, stop looking forward or looking back and say, my life is now the future is now. And that's kind of where we got to go with things. So I think it's the right answer. And I think it's all good stuff. Yeah. I'll say this to close out. Like I do definitely want to coach. I definitely want to coach wrestling in the future. You know, I just don't know what level that's going to be at. You know, I right. love working with kids and as a really good wrestler, it's funny, but I like working with kids. That's, I don't want to say stink, but that maybe just start that are just starting the sport that are starting the sport later on as like middle schoolers for the first time. Like I like, I like working with really basic wrestlers and it would be a dream to find a job that could make a lot of money and coach like a high school team or like coach kids. I just want to coach. That would be my dream, but uh, yeah. I, it's really hard to set something like that up while I'm so focused on what I'm doing. So I'm just full focused on what I'm doing right now. And uh, I know when the time comes to move on that I'll put all that focus into whatever I want to do next and I'll figure it out. Uh, I have a great network of people in wrestling outside of wrestling that I think, you know, we'll figure it out and we'll go from there. But life is really good right now. I appreciate you guys having me on. Appreciate being episode 50 and you guys think of to me for that i really uh i really appreciate your guys social media presence too like i said before shout out for me to spartan you know i got the sweatshirt on right now yeah my sponsor for uh for wrestling apparel and uh they're really great to me shout out to nick Aron over there well if there's i'll tell you what ash if there's anything you want us to promote from spartan let john know we'll get that up there um because like i said the, the kids they love your stuff man you know, you know spartan combat um I think it's SpartanCombat.com or maybe just their Instagram page, but you can find everything there. All right, good stuff. Follow Spartan Combat. Follow Anthony Ashnall. Great episode, Anthony. Great job, Great Anthony. Having you on. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna be following you. We'll talk to you later.